Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to build a stone wall using some foam core, an X-Acto knife, or a craft knife, and um, some paint and ink and a pen or a pencil. Um, I'm gonna try the pen. I normally just use a pencil, so we'll see which one's gonna work best for me. But here's a brick wall that I completed just recently. So this is what we're going to use to build. I need to add to it. This is a backdrop for a miniature display that I have. Um, this is really simple, easy process to do. It's not difficult at all. And I think I had a lot of, this was shown recently in the Craft Along videos, and I had a lot of questions about the brick wall. So it's kind of, made me decide to do uh, a new series called uh, Let's Make Something with tutorials on how to do a variety of different things. So let's get started. So once you figure out, you can make your brick wall any thickness you want. This is XPS foam and it came in a package. I bought this a long time ago um, and it's made by, I think Game Master, but it's for tabletop gamer people. And um, you can buy it that way, although it's gotten kind of expensive since I bought it. Um, this particular brand, anyway, way more than I would pay for it now. So um, you can buy it at your local hardware store. It's uh, pink insulation foam type stuff. Um, <clears throat> so whatever kind of foam. And you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. You can glue two pieces together to get it thicker if you want. It all depends on where you're going to use it. For my purpose, you're only going to see the front of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it doesn't need to be really that thick. So what I've done, I do, however, add an extra piece to the back to make it like a stand, to make it a little thicker so that it stands up better. One little piece is kind of wobbly. Um, and again, you're not gonna see this the way I'm using it, so. If you were going to see the back, I would probably put two pieces together. This stuff's really super easy to cut, and you can cut it with a craft knife, or I, I like to use this, um, it's Ulfa um, Utility Knife. I think it works really well for this because you can get a really long blade if you want. The only suggestion I have for you when you go to cut this is that you don't normally cut through it in one cut. Let me grab a ruler. So let's say I want this little piece right here. You want to hold your knife and make sure you keep your knife as straight as possible. And then you just want to kind of break that top layer and just keep doing that without a whole lot of pressure. The knife, let the knife do the pressure for you. And eventually you'll get through all of the layers. And if you go slow like that, you'll get a relatively clean cut. If you try to force it and try to cut it all in one. Okay, do you see what happened? You see how jagged that is? It ripped the foam when I was cutting it. So that's why you wanna take more lighter touch um, cuts are far better than trying to get through it in one or two cuts. Just, just take your time. You'll be a lot happier with the results. Let me set this aside and this aside. And I've already cut this first piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one. Now this one, I'm not gonna use a ruler. I've got a straight edge here because I just kinda wanna do a, I don't really want it to be um, perfectly straight at the top. So again, I'm just using a lightweight kind of touch with it to get through. And I don't really care if this one winds up being a little jagged on the top because I'm going to carve it down. You know, brick walls are rarely flat on the top. So I'm going to take my utility knife and just kind of saw along the edges here to add a bit of 
now you can see how that kind of added a little edge to it. And the same thing on this side. Basically, you're just kind of carving it. And there we go. And if you get a little piece, a couple of pieces of the little jaggy parts on the top, don't worry about it right now. This stuff does tend to stick to you, your hands and your clothes. It's kind of like those little foam balls that drive you nuts. <clears throat> I won't add these until later. But to create your pattern, you're simply going to just draw shapes and connect them to each other. If you want to, while you're carving this, you can go in and cut little sections out where, like, maybe some of the wall has crumbled. I'm not going to do that with this one. Um, let's see. I need one side straight, and the other end I need to be kind of rounded because it's going to show. So I don't need it to be. And be very careful with these knives. They are extremely sharp. You can whack a finger off quicker than you can say boo. Or ouch. <laughs> so there we go. I added that to the edge. Let's see, this one goes this way, so what I'm going to need to do, is that right? Yeah. Put that off, and gonna, yeah, I'll do it this way. There we go. And those edges might look a little funny right now on the ends here, but they will look totally different when we're done. So then all we're going to do is take your pen or your pencil. I'm just going to try this. This is a mechanical pencil, but there's no lead in it. And I generally will start at the bottom and in a corner. Well, that works okay, but... I like the pencil. You can see what you're doing a lot better. And you're just pressing into the foam. I'd usually just make a light outline and then I dig in a little deeper. And it doesn't matter that you can see the pencil. When you get to the edges, you wanna go ahead and wrap that around. Now this is the back part and it's not gonna show so I won't do it the whole way up. But you just take this and press into the foam Like that. <clears throat> it looks a lot different when you do it on this end where we've carved it. So just keep doing this all the way around. Keep your shapes, try to keep them random and a little bit rounded if you can. And don't worry about, if you think you've messed up, don't worry about it. Just keep going because you won't notice it. And that's basically, we're just going to keep doing that for the whole entire piece. So I'm going to keep drawing and let you watch. I've come up to the top here, so when I do this piece, I'm going to go ahead and bring that all the way across the top. The 
the same with this. So on these edges where we trimmed it, I'm just kind of rubbing my pencil over top of that sharp edge so that it kind of rounds it out a little bit more and it's not quite as angular. Okay, so there we go. Everything has been, um, I'm gonna round this side too where it's going to connect right on these edges. There we go. So now that it's all drawn, the next thing we want to do is to paint it. And you're going to need some black acrylic paint, any kind of acrylic paint, doesn't matter what kind. And you need kind of a stiffer brush. Um, There we go. So I don't try to keep my mat clean. It never, it never stays clean. <laughs> I always mess it up somehow. And you're going to paint the whole entire thing with your black paint. And you wanna make sure when you're doing this that you get down in those crevices and I will tell you from experience that you're, you will think that you're down in all those crevices, but then once it dries, you'll find that you missed a lot of places and you just have to come back in and touch it up. So now this is dried and I got did pretty good. I only had to touch up a couple of little spots. Um, if you get to this point and you think that some of your impressions aren't deep enough, you can take your pencil, go back over them, and um, make the impressions deeper, and then just touch up with some black paint. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of different colors of acrylic paint. I've got a dark gray, or it's a medium gray, a light gray. Actually, I picked up the wrong one. This is a dove gray, which is kind of a blue color to it, so we don't want that. We want a light gray, and then a linen color. Let me grab the light gray. And you don't need a whole lot because we're not gonna use very much of either any color. And then you're going to need a paper towel. To wipe your brush with. And then we're going to go in, this is a little small brush. We're gonna go in and just lightly touch some color on different random blocks. You know, start with your dark gray first. And it doesn't have to be very neat. You don't need a lot of paint. When you get to the top, be sure that you go all the way around. I said just random spots. It doesn't have to be real neat.
Okay, that looks perfectly fine to me. So we need to let this dry. <clears throat> and then we're going to come back and do a black wash over it, or a wash over it. And what our wash is going to be is, I like to use ink. You can use uh, your black acrylic paint or a brown or a mix of black and brown acrylic paint, or I use these inks and I use a black and a brown mix. And you mix it with water, just find an empty jar. This was an old spice jar. And um, I fill it probably, you know, it's gonna be pretty full, or it was when I started it, of water. And then I use one dropper full of the black and one dropper full of the brown, and it gives me kind of a black brown wash. And I just keep it like this to use whenever I need to. Let me get this out of the way. And probably got my head in there, I'm sorry. And I'm going to use a big fat brush. I'm looking for my one that I normally use. Okay, so you want a big fat brush. Now, if you use the ink, it can, when you go to wash this out, you need to wash it really, really well or else your ink will stiffen it up. This is still drying. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. And we're going to need some more paper towel. Probably a couple of sheets because this stuff will drip. So you kind of want to keep it from running everywhere. Ah, oh, let me go dry this real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, we should be pretty good and dry here. So now what you're going to do, make sure if you've made this up and it's been sitting, shake it good, make sure it's really mixed up well. Then you're just going to take a big old blob of this and you're gonna paint the whole entire surface. And I know it looks bad, but it's not. You want it to kind of run. And you're gonna get a little messy, probably. You want to, that stuff to get down inside there really well. And I think I probably need to go in and do some more gray on those black stones to make it match with what I've got here. I think I didn't leave any black. So let me do that again. And sometimes you just have to play with it to see what, what is best and what you like. And it's always advisable to, when you're doing this, is to kind of do them all at the same time instead of in parts like I've done here. Yeah. I should have done that at first. We'll see how this is going to dry now. That was a little mistake. But you know what? That's okay. Sometimes mistakes are good. And they're happy mistakes.
Okay, so now I'm going to do another little coat of the wash on top. Be sure and don't forget your edges. And that should be good to go. Now, if you think you've gotten too heavy handed, you can always blot it with a paper towel. And then we just need to let that dry completely. And once you, it's dried, you'll need to spray it with a, um, a uh, matte spray sealer. And that'll dull it down to where it looks more like stone when you're done. I got a little piece sticking up there. So I'm going to let this dry, wash out my brush, and I'll be back. But now you can see that I've gone out and sprayed it. It's dry. And so look how lovely that looks. All the black is down in the crevices. Your stones don't look real clean. They're kind of dirty. And it matches up pretty well with my other wall. So this will be set into this wall like that. And that's all there is to it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's kind of stupid, isn't it? <laughs> but easy, easy and very relaxing project. And once you get these built, you can just add pieces to it if you want or make it however long you want. If you need to connect two pieces to get the length that you want, then you want to put some toothpicks down in here and connect them with the toothpicks. And then you can um, use some like uh, the texture paste or the grip paste and put over the seam. Or you can carve a little out and make them overlap. Um, but that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you'll try to do some yourself. At another time, I'll show you how I did these steps. Um, that's with texture paste. And it's also really easy. So that's it. Have a great day. And I will see you next time. Bye.